horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hot Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. The daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find the greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, Rico! Oh, Silver! middle-aged woman who stepped from the stage at Brimstone was not the type to attract much attention from the curious group at the stagecoach station. Annie Calhoun stood for a moment looking around. Then she approached a pleasant-faced man and asked a question in a voice which gave a slight hint of her Scottish background. Begging your pardon, sir, but can you tell me where the Bert Adams ranch is? Well, of course I can, ma'am. The Adams Spread is a Circle A, three miles out the West Trail. I'll take you there. Oh, thank you, sir. Hello, Bass. Hello there. Hello. Later that morning, Annie stepped from a buckboard in front of the Circle A ranch house, and taking her well-worn no. carpet bag in her hand, oh, she thanked her benefactor, then turned and walked toward the house. Hey, bye, ma'am. Get out there. As Annie hesitatingly started up the porch steps, a tall, bronzed man, about 28 years of age, came around the house holding the hand of an eight-year-old boy. Annie stopped and stood waiting. Morning, ma'am. Something I can do for you? I'm good at it. I know. Oh, uh, well, what I mean is... Oh, man, think you startled me a wee bit for the moment. Uh, oh, are you going to stay with us? <laughs> are you? Now, Donnie, you mustn't ask questions, son. Now, ma'am, if you care to tell me what it is you want... I, I'll... uh... Well, you see, sir, like the little one has just said, I was hoping perhaps I could stay here. I'm afraid I don't serve you. Well, you see, sir, I'm good at housekeeping and looking after little ones like Donnie, for instance, and a cook, and I'm... <laughs> now, hold on, please, ma'am, not so fast. We already have a cook, and my, uh, my mother looks after the other things. Your mother, you say? That's right. She lives with us. My, uh, my wife passed on a couple of years ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your wife, sir. It was brazen of me to come out here so unexpected, asking to be taken in. Oh, why can't she stay, Daddy? I want her to stay. I like her. Oh, bless your heart, laddie. Uh, (laughs) Come to think of it, Mother complains a lot about what she has to do. She really isn't too well, you know. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, it is. It's nothing serious, but she gets headaches at times and complains of feeling faint now and then. Think of that. 
We, uh, might give you a try, eh, Donnie? Oh, Donnie. I, uh, I knew you'd have a kind heart, lad. And I'll do my best to... Oh, oh. now no, you ought to be happy at the news. Oh, I am. Indeed I am, Bert, lad. Oh, that is Mr. Adams, <laughs> sir. I like the way you said Bert, lad. You call me Bert. But, uh, what are we to call you? Well, uh, I've been known as Mother Calhoun, and it would please me. Mother Calhoun it is. How's that, then? Oh, gosh, that's fine. Can I, I mean, may I show Mother Calhoun my pony over in the corral? Oh, that you may, laddie. I'd be most happy to see him. Fine. You go along with Donnie. I'll take your bag inside. You can meet my mother at noon. She's resting now, but she'll be around for dinner. You'll, uh, get... $25 $25 a month with room and keep. Uh, if you... Now, there's uh, no if, Bert, lad. I'll take it and gladly. Come along now, Donnie, and show me that wonderful moment. Mrs. Adams was a thin, mean-natured type of woman with a nagging voice and determined manner, which caused her to be disliked by the ranch hands and others from whom she could demand service. When her nagging had no effect upon Bert... She resorted to faking a headache or a fainting spell in hopes of winning her point. While Donnie was showing Mother Calhoun his pony, Bert told Mrs. Adams about the woman he had employed. His face was expressionless as Mrs. Adams spoke her thoughts. You mean to tell me you took on a strange woman that came begging to the door for a job? He didn't beg for it. Of all the crazy things. You can go tell her you changed your mind, do you hear? Tell her anything. But let her take that dowdy carpetbag of hers and leave. Mother Calhoun is going to stay. I told her she could. And Donnie wants her to stay. Mother Calhoun. <laughs> well, I never. Oh. Oh, my headache has come back. But sometimes I think I'm not even wanted. <sighs> now, don't be foolish. Oh. Go in your room and rest. I'll have your dinner set. Oh. After you get to know Mother Calhoun, I'm sure you'll like her. I'm going out for a while. I'll see you later. Like her, will I? He'll find out. And so will she. A few weeks later, Mrs. Adams drove the buckboard to town alone and went to the office of Carl Arnhem, whose slight Germanic accent intrigued her, along with his suave manner. Carl was a land agent who was not too well thought of because of his slick operations. He stood up as Mrs. Adams entered. Well, ah, my dear Flora, you've not been here lately. No, I haven't been to town, Carl. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. Uh, You've heard about that woman Bert hired at the ranch? Oh, 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 but of course. You're upset because your son and grandson like her. But not my son and you know it. And that boy, Donnie, is a nuisance. But you've never told Bert that you're not his mother. Well, of course I haven't. If he knew I was only his stepmother, it would make things worse than they are. When I married my husband, Bert was only two. And I've just tested every minute of bringing him up. But I couldn't show it. Oh, if there was some way for you to get a share of that ranch, we could get married, Flora. You uh, haven't changed your mind. Well, of course you? I haven't, Carl. But even without a share of the ranch, we... Uh, you married. wouldn't be happy without plenty to live on. Carl, you told me that land those farmers live on south of the Circle A is valuable. It is, it is. The railroad would pay high for it. But your stepson cut it up into farms for those people who haven't paid him anything for almost a year. Why, they could all be evicted on short notice. Oh, but too soft-hearted. But he's played into my hands at last, Carl. Huh? And those farmers will be evicted. What do you mean? Well, Bert left this morning with some of the men on a big cattle drive north. Uh-huh. He'll be gone almost two months. Well, last night, I got him to sign a paper giving me the right to act for him while he's gone. Ah, uh, power of attorney. Yes, I guess that's mm-hmm. what you call it. Now, Carl, you attend to the eviction notices. Then get in touch with your railroad man and make a good deal for that tract of land. Yes, but when Bert gets back, how will you explain? Well, what will I'll you... just give him the price he sold the land for to the farmers. Then, when the railroad pays off, we'll keep the difference and get married. Many ways. <laughs> what can he do? Nothing, of course. <laughs> I doubt if he'd try to do anything towards his own uh, 
shall I say, mother? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow I have something else to do, too. Yeah? I'm putting out that soft-talking Eddie Calhoun, bag and baggage. <laughs> now, come on, let's, let's go talk to the sheriff about serving those farmers with notices. Yeah. Later that morning, the Lone Ranger and Tottle were preparing to break a temporary camp they had made in a grove just off the main trail. There. I bet that cinch is telling enough. Uh, we have things packed in saddlebags now. Let's get going, then. We should reach the mission by nightfall. I'm anxious to visit with the Padre and get the news. Ah, easy, steady, big Come on, scout, easy, fella. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. We'll head up the west trail past the Circle A spread, then cut across to the river trail. Um, that saved time. Sounds very hot. River trail will not be dusty like others. Well, here's the trail. Let's move at a faster pace. Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. A masked man and Indian rode along the west trail a short distance in silence. Then Toto pointed and spoke. Look, Kimasabi. Someone sit on rock and tied a trail yonder. It's a woman, Toto. She shouldn't be out on this trail in the hot sun. Perhaps we can help her. Ah. Look. A woman stand up. Her seemed frightened. The mask has frightened her. Now don't be afraid. We won't harm you. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Lance, it's a masked man and an Indian. Please don't be frightened. We stopped because we thought it could help you. Believe me, we're friends. Oh, sure, lad. There's nothing worse could happen to me than being alone and stranded in the middle of nowhere. A friendly word is welcome even from one wearing a mask. Well, it's not good you be alone on trail. I, uh, I noticed your carpet bag. You were heading for town? Aye, lad, that I was. I have a wee bit of money, but not enough to get far. Just having to leave Bert Lad and Donny Boys has put an ache in my heart. Oh, I'm sure we can help you if you'll let us. Thank you, Lad. I have a feeling I can trust you both. Good. We were camping a short way back from here. We'll take you there. Then Tonto will go and hire a rig to take you to town. Tonto, we'll ride double to camp. The lady can ride scout. You mean I, I have to get up on a horse? Oh, <laughs> Lad, please. He's very gentle. We'll ride right beside you. Now, let's go back to the campsite. Within a short time, the Lone Ranger and Toto reached their former campsite with Annie Calhoun. The Lone Ranger gently lifted her from the saddle and made her comfortable. Annie, liking them, told what had happened. And so I left without so much as a goodbye from little Don. It's strange that a woman like Mrs. Adams should have a son and grandson like Bert and Donnie. Tell me, Mother Calhoun... Why did you seek out the Adams Ranch in the first place? Lad, there's something about you that makes you want to tell, so I shall. Thanks. You'll be glad to see Years ago, I married. We lived in St. Louis with my husband's parents, who resented me. While my husband was with an expedition in the West, our son was born. His folks told me the baby died at birth, and later they put me out. I see. They told me that my husband had been killed in the West. Well, I left the city. Then years later, I went back and found out that the baby had lived, and so had my husband. Oh, they told him I deserted him and the baby. He got a divorce, went west with the boy, and remarried. Ten years ago, I read of John's death in a St. Louis paper and of the marriage of his son. And he told about the ranch and all. I'm beginning to understand. The man I married was John Adams. Bert is my son, and Donnie, my grandson. Oh, I finally had to see them. And John never told Bert. He thinks that that woman is his real mother. Your story explains a great deal. Yes, I know. But the worst of it is she's got Bert to let her sign papers while he's away. And she said when she put me out this morning that she was putting out all the small farmers south of here, too. Right away. She tried to evict those farmers. There'll be trouble. Plenty of it. Hello, before that woman goes too far, we're going to find a way to stop her once and for all. Ah. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
thrilled to continue. After Annie Calhoun told the Lone Ranger and Toto that she was really Bert Adams' mother, she also told them about Mrs. Adams' plans to evict the farmers during Bert's absence. Knowing it meant trouble, the Lone Ranger stated that some means must be found to stop the eviction. He stood for a moment thinking. Then he spoke again. When did Bert leave? Yesterday morning. Toto, if they're driving up the big herd, they won't go too far in 24 hours. Not right. Oh, uh, Mother Calhoun... Do you have any proof of your relationship to Bert Adams? Oh, yes. In my carpet bag, I have our marriage certificate. John's and mine, and Bert Ladd's birth record, along with a tin type of John and me when we were married. Oh. I kept them under the mattress at the ranch, so his stepmother didn't see them. Good. Toto, I'll make a comfortable lean-to here for Mother Calhoun. Take Scout and follow Bert Adams. Tell him what's happening to the farmers. Get him back here as soon as possible. Ah. morning, as the sheriff left Carl Arnhem's office, Lefty, one of Arnhem's henchmen, entered the back room. What's up, Carl? Heard loud talking. Yes, the sheriff isn't being cooperative about evicting those farmers. Get the men together and have them ready. Sure. Expecting trouble? If those farmers want trouble, they'll get it. I'll be back before noon. If you hear any news, let me know. Tonight we'll teach the farmers a lesson. Where are you going? <laughs> to the Circle A Ranch. I want to persuade that foolish woman to sign more papers. She'll think they're in connection with the evictions. But before she's through, <laughs> some of the best Circle A rangeland will belong to me. Back at the camp, the little ranger had made Annie Calhoun comfortable. Then leaving her in the grove lean-to, resting... He went to another grove a short distance away, and in a secluded spot, he carefully disguised himself as a Mexican. Then he headed for town to see what was happening. Leaving Silver in the woods behind the cafe, the Lone Ranger went between the buildings and entered the front door. He made his way to a vacant table and sat down alone. At the next table, Lefty and three other tough-looking men sat with glasses in their hands, listening to a farmer named Gary Belton talk to a small group standing nearby. No one's put me off the farm I worked so hard to cultivate. Some of the others are upset and wonder just what to do. But I talked to all of them and told them to sit tight. I'm going back out there now to have another meeting with the others. Come on, come on. Looks like Belton's made himself ringleader for them farmers. Carl would like to know that. Yeah, that's right, Lefty. Carl won't like it at all. Carl said something about teaching the farmers a lesson tonight. When he hears about Belton, maybe he'll have us burn his place out as a warning. Oh, he'll serve Belton right, too. Hey, where'd Carl go this morning, anyway? <laughs> out to the circle to get some more paper signed. By the time that loco female gets through, Carl owned half the ranch and all legal, too. <laughs> the Lone Ranger decided he had heard enough. He also decided something had to be done and quickly. He got up and left the cafe. Hey, did you notice the hombre just went out? Yeah. He sat at the next table without ordering and left in a hurry. You boys stay here. I'm going to follow that hombre and see what he's up to. Right. The Lone Ranger went out of sight into the woods where Silver waited beside a small stream. Hastily, he scrubbed the berry dye from his face and hands. Then, after putting on his mask, he mounted Silver. Come, on, Silver! Lefty had walked back between the buildings, but lost sight of the Lone Ranger in the woods. He stood a short time watching. Then he heard departing hoofs and saw the Lone Ranger ride from the west end of the woods and head toward the west trail. Hombre's up to something. I'm going to find out what it is. I'll get my bronc and trail him right now. Meantime, Carl Arnhem was at the Circle A ranch house. And here's another paper you have to sign. Well, what's that one for? Now I'd better read it. Oh, you don't trust the man you hope to marry? Hmm? Oh, Carl, you know I do. I just <laughs> wanted to know what I was. in connection with the eviction. Oh. Well, I'll get pen and ink. Yes, and hurry, Flora. I must get back to Brimstone. 
Well, here's the pen and ink. Now, where do I sign it? Right here. Why did I tell Rory? Why did she? I wanted to come back. Get him out of here. You sniffing little brat. Go to your room and stay there, do you hear? If Daddy was here, she wouldn't leave like that. Go to your room, I said. <laughs> Why, that little brat. Oh, let him go. Here. Here, sign the paper. All right. There. Good. Now I'll take the paper. I'm not careful. Get him to the kitchen. I'll take both of those papers. Oh, see here, you. All right, Carl. I followed him in. Now drop your gun, mister, and reach. That's for you, Lefty. I'll get some of them in. First, I'll get back those papers. The Lone Ranger stood with both hands raised. He had dropped one gun, but the other was still in its holster. As Carl stepped close to take the papers from his pocket, the masked man moved like lightning. No, you don't. And grabbing Carl, he swung him around between Lefty and himself, at the same time drawing his other gun. Let me go! You didn't notice my other gun. Now it's at your back. Tell your friend to drop his gun, Pato. He doesn't drop, drop your gun, Lefty. You shoot, drop it. All right. There. Quickly, the Lone Ranger stooped and picked up the gun he had dropped. Keeping them covered, he took Carl's and then Lefty's. Then, moving quickly, he went out the front door, taking the papers with him. He headed for a grove off to the side where Silver waited. Before entering the ranch house, the Lone Ranger had seen and heard through the open window what had taken place with Donnie. He rode hurriedly out to the trail and saw the boy sitting on a stump, weeping. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, Silver, come on. He's your I don't care. I don't care about any. Now, wait. I'm a friend, Donnie. And I'm going to take you to Mother Calhoun. Will you come with me? Oh, golly. Sure. Well, we've got to hurry. They'll be trailing me in a minute. All right. Up you go. Oh, gosh. Easy, steady now, boy. Come on, sir. The masked man had used clever means to cover his trail to the camp. After reuniting Donnie and Mother Calhoun... He waited impatiently for Tonto and Bert as night began to fall. Finally, hearing fast hoofbeats approaching, he mounted Silver and rode out to meet them. Come on, Silver! A short time later, in the valley south of the ranch, Gary Belton stepped out onto the porch of his small farmhouse when he heard several horsemen approaching. Come on, Gary. You were given time to vacate. Now it's an example to the others. We're going to burn you out. Why, you ornery, smooth-talking coyote? I have caught it. Oh! I get busy, men. Set the fires going. Carl's men dismounted and started to move toward the house and buildings when they heard fast hoofs approaching. I hear others coming beyond the bench. That might be the sheriff in the posse. Get your horse. Quick! Carl and his men started to mount. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Bert came riding at a fast gallop around the bend nearby with their guns ready for action. All of his men are trying to get away. The moon's bright enough to see him. Better give him some land. both been wounded, and as Tonto and Bert turned their attention on two more, who had come with Carl, Red, and Lefty, the Lone Ranger shook out his lariat as he noticed Lefty, who had succeeded in mounting, for his horse and start away. Come back, you! Swinging his lariat over his head, the masked man threw it at Lefty. And with a whir, it settled around the crook's chest, pulling him roughly from the saddle. Covered by Tonto and Bert, the other two quickly dropped their guns and raised their hands. Uh, looks like we got them all, mister. Oh, 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 oh. Arnhem and his men left town. Me and my two deputies are... A man shall who? Reach, mister. Reckon you've been hired to... He's sheriff. He's a friend. I'll vouch for him. We got here in time to prevent these men from burning this farm out. I found Belton up here on the porch. He's wounded, but it ain't serious. Sheriff, you can take them in for attempted murder. There'll be other charges later. I suggest you stop with him at the Circle A on your way back. All right, Bert. We'll meet you there. All right, let's get going. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Later, at the Circle A Ranch House, the sheriff stood with Carl listening as Bert talked to Mrs. Adams. I can't savvy why you did all this, Mother, but I'm sure Carl Arnold was at the bottom of it all. Stop blaming Carl. 
I don't know what brought you back here, but I can tell you facts. I'm marrying, Carl. What? Ah, she's talking foolish. I have no such idea. Now, see here, you. She's my mother, and you can't... She's not your mother, you fool. Say, what is all this? I don't understand. Hey, hey, I found her. Found who, Johnny? Where have you been, son? Johnny was at our camp with Mother Calhoun. She's really your mother, Bert. She has the proof. Bert, lad. Bert, my boy. I'm all confused. But I hope it's true. You're my real mother. Yes, but, lad. Oh, bless you. I often wondered why I didn't, well, feel any love for... I suppose being your stepmother won't mean anything now. I'm not wanted by you, I call. Mother Calhoun will take over here. I'll fix a small farm for you in the south of the valley, Mother Adams. You can go there and live. Sheriff, you can have the pleasure of tearing up those eviction notices... Tell the farmers they're safe, just as I promised. I knew Arnhem and that woman were lying. The masked man gave me the papers he took here today. Arnhem was trying to get part of my property. <laughs> he won't need property where he's going. Say, who is that masked man? Him and the Indians slipped on out. Oh, well, Mom, uh, maybe you or Johnny can tell us that. Indeed, I can, Bert, lad. Like yourself. He's a laddie I'd be proud to call my son. Brave, gentle, and understanding. He's the Lone Ranger. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger...